Why hiring women is a risk for businesses today. And this is something that is a hotbed topic, but I really don't know why because it's no big secret. I mean, especially with what's going on today with a lot of these Me Too claims, um, allegations of sexual harassment in the workplace, and there's just too much risk to have women working in your company, all right? And I've heard this from a number of business owners, CEOs, entrepreneurs, where they refuse to hire women. They just don't want to do it. Obviously, they won't admit it, right? Because they would be plastered all over the news. They'll never admit it, but they are purposely choosing male candidates over female candidates, right? Unless they're part of a company that, and it's usually the bigger, like corp, like huge corporations that do this, where they set a kind of like a uh, quota for the amount of women that need to be hired, the amount of minorities and whatnot, where I'm completely against that. I'm all for hiring the best person for the job. I'm all about the meritocracy. I mean, I want the best person for the job. I mean, I'm a business owner, I'm an entrepreneur, I hire people all over the world, and I've hired both men and women, and I hire them based on their talents. I hire them based on their results, what they're able to produce. I don't look at skin color, I don't, I don't look at age, I don't look at, unless they're really young, then I kinda look at that, just because you know a lot of these roles are very, they require a lot of mental maturity, mental discipline, and you know sometimes you don't really get that until your late 20s, sometimes even early 30s, right? But I hire people from all over the world, both men and women, and I hire based on their, whatever their unique talents are. Uh, I try to expose that and use it, you know, not only to benefit themselves, but to benefit our business, to help our business. But I am not never gonna form like a quota, like, oh shoot, we don't have enough women working here, we don't have enough of this ethnicity or this gender, I don't care. I just hire based on who's the best candidate. And really, that's how you produce you know, the best products. And that's how you give customers the highest value return for their money. And to do anything less than that is very selfish, right? So a lot of these companies that are hiring women just because they have a quota or hiring a certain like diverse, like multicultural employee or staff, employees or staff just because they need to meet that quota are not helping the customers. They're not bringing the best and most highest value product to the market. Really, they're hurting the market and they're hurting the progression of society because you know the more we progress in technology, in products, in making things better, the further we go. But then when you just hire people just because you know you you want to play the like the politically correct game and you know you want a virtue signal and shit, you're not doing you know society any favors and you're especially you're not doing your customers any favors right you're not doing your customers any favors because they're paying more for a shittier product they're paying more for shittier customer service you know just so you could be like oh yeah look at me i'm such a good person i hired this many of this ethnicity and that ethnicity and i hired this many women I'm such a great person, aren't I? You know, it's just so you could virtue say. Very selfish, very selfish. And I've talked about this before when, you know, I look for companies to invest in. I don't do this a whole lot, but <clears throat> sometimes companies hit me up and then I kind of look at their business profile and I might like the product. I'm like, yeah, this product looks cool. Looks cool. I, I believe in this. I believe that you guys could probably do something with this. And then they give me that speech about how, yeah, we're a very diverse organization made up of both men and women. We have... Uh, almost an exclusively female executive staff, the head of our advertising and marketing departments, all female, you know, and they start shooting all that shit, done. I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. Because now I know you're not in it to bring the best and most highest value product to the market. You're in it for yourself. You're in it to friggin' virtue signal. You're in it so you can cheerlead for you know, your own self-righteousness. This isn't about business, this is about you and your politics. So screw you and your product, right? I always give them the finger. I'm like, no, I don't want to invest in that. Why is it something we did? No, stop emailing me. I don't want to hear it, right? No, I'm not interested. I just tell them that. 
So I look for companies and I do run across them from time to time. It's getting a little harder, but companies that, and they're generally smaller companies where they're run you know, by a small staff and it's one guy at the top making those decisions. And I'm always looking for a badass alpha mofo, right? Badass alpha mofo who sticks to his guns, who's passionate about the product, who's passionate about growing the business, right? He doesn't sleep. He lives for this product 24 seven. He doesn't take shit from his staff, right? They have meetings and he hears them out and he looks at the numbers, right? He looks at the analytics. He looks where he could grow the business, but at the end of the day, it's his decision. Those are the companies I look to invest in, not these multicultural, diverse, you know, female ex exclusive, we're inclusive to everyone, LGBTQR, everybody, gays, trans, women, we let everyone work here. You know, it's like, great, but are they, were they the best candidates? You know, no, it's like all about diversity. No, okay, then you're not interested in your business. You're just interested in your politics, right? I want a business who's interested in their products and their customers and growing that product and giving their customers the highest value they, they possibly can and not virtue signaling. You know, that's how I build my own businesses. That's what, that's what I look for in other businesses too. I try to deliver the highest value I can to you guys, to my subscribers, to you know, my students. That's all I focus on, okay? I don't even focus on the money so much. I just focus on the numbers. I just focus on the analytics and what you guys want and I give that to you. Simple as that. That's how entrepreneurship works. Entrepreneurship 101. You do not hire people, you know, based on skin color, ethnicity, sexual preference, right? Or gender, you just don't, okay? You don't do that. It's amazing to me that these companies, the founders work so hard to get the, their, their business to where it is, to where it becomes this giant corporation and then you get a bunch of virtue sig signaling, leftist beta cucks on the management team and they start to slowly destroy the company. Right? And a lot of female CEOs, hate to say it, have destroyed a lot of big major corporations. Right, HP? Right, Compact Rosario? <laughs> right, a lot of these companies have kind of flopped after they put a uh, female CEO in charge. And I'm not saying there aren't good female CEOs out there, I just haven't really seen too many of them. Right, but at the end of the day, it's very risky for a business to hire a woman in today's environment, just because again, with all of the sexual harassment claims, right? No business wants to be on the hook for that. And for them, for any business, it really comes down to, let's just hire the person who will give us the least amount of headache that can do the job, right? And a lot of these women that are getting certain jobs aren't even actually qualified for those jobs, right? They're just part of that quota. Right? They're just being given the job almost in order for the company to fulfill a quota. You know, because obviously they're pushing aside better candidates. They're pushing aside like males who might be better candidates so that they can put a woman in that place. And besides all of the Me Too allegations going on out there, especially in the workplace, a lot of companies and business owners are just choosing not to hire women because they know at some point, especially if she's a younger woman, she's going to take time off, right? She's gonna take time off to do what? To have a baby, to have a child. And then they're gonna to have to bring somebody in to replace her. And a lot of these women, you know, once they have a kid, life really changes for them. And I don't blame them, you know, where the kid becomes the center of their universe, which he should be or she should be. So for many businesses, it's risky because if they hire a female, they know at some point, she's going to end up having a child and she's going to have to take nine months off or however many months off. And not only that, but there's a lot, a lot of statistics um, talking about how women generally want more vacation time, how women generally don't like to stay late at the office, how women generally like to have a life outside of the office, which is understandable, especially for women. You know, whereas for men, we're just like worker bees. We just want to keep plugging away and like stacking cash. 
stacking as much cash as possible, right? That's like our focus when we're working. So we don't mind staying late at the office if we know there's a huge payoff because we're chasing the money, right? For the most part, like I said, we want to stack cash. So most guys, for most business owners, they know that when they hire men that they're going to stay late at the office, they're never going to take time off to have a child, and they're generally going to be like worker bees in the office, right? They're just going to pound away. Whereas when you hire a woman, she generally doesn't want to do that because women aren't always in it for just the money. It's like they want to be able to pay their bills and have money, you know, to, to live, to shop, right? To buy nice things, to take vacations, but they don't need so much money or they're not, they're not as monetarily focused as we are as men. So this is why they need, you know, they require their vacation time. They require, you know, um, a certain amount of working hours and not to go beyond that. It's not to say that women never stay late at the office. Obviously some do, but most don't, right? And I worked for a Fortune 100 company, okay? And I've worked for other corporations too. And I can remember like the women I worked with, not all of them, but I've like a few of them, whenever I'd see somebody crying, let me put it this way, whenever I'd see somebody crying in the office, crying at work, 100% of the time, it was a female coworker. It was a woman. It was never a male coworker, right? I'd never seen any of my former male coworkers at work crying. It was always a woman. I remember uh, this one girl that I worked with and she was such a sweet girl. Her name was Sally. Sally was so cool. And I loved Sally, but man, you know, and Sally was like really, she was actually a talented salesperson because we worked in sales for this one company. And she was really talented and she was doing way better than I was, okay? I mean, I didn't take my job seriously back then. She was doing way better than I was. And I remember Sally, like at times, she would literally put her head under her desk and she put her, put her head down and I'd come in and I'm like, hey, what happened? To Sally's not here today. And then I'd hear this bawling on my left side. Like, ah, 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 ah. And I'm like, oh my God, Sally? I'm like, I'm like, Sally, you all right? And she's like, yeah, we're good, we're good. You know, and I just remember like patting her like on her back like so many times, like, it's all right, it's okay, it's okay, you know? I was like, it's, what's wrong? And she was like, nothing, nothing, you know? And she was like, I... I thought I had this one sale and it didn't go through. I don't think I'm gonna make my numbers this week. You know, and I'm like, Sally, it's just a job. You'll be fine. It's okay. Yeah, but Sally was constantly under her desk crying and I felt bad for her so many times and I just like pat her on the back and try to make her feel better. It's funny, like even just patting her on the back, like if this was today, me too. You know, I would get the, I would get called into HR or something like that. You know, probably reported by one of my feminist uh, co-workers. I don't think Sally would ever have done anything like that. She was just like, she was actually a really cool girl but beyond, you know, the crying. But I guarantee if you are in a work environment and you hear somebody crying 100% of the time, it's going to be one of your female co-workers. And if you've experienced this where you've seen a female co-worker cry, you know what I'm talking about. But at the end of the day, for most businesses and most companies, there's just too much risk in hiring females. Okay, there's too much risk in hiring a woman over a male counterpart, especially a male counterpart who is willing to stay and work longer hours, who is willing to work overtime, who is willing to kick his vacation time aside to keep working, right? It's too much risk for a business to just kind of virtue signal and go, okay, we're going to hire more women. And then knowing those women can potentially file Me Too charges, sexual harassment charges against fellow coworkers, management, staff, right? Not to mention her at some point taking time off to have a child, if not multiple children, you know, taking many, many months off and knowing that, you know, typically she's not going to want to work all of these overtime hours. She's not going to want to stay late at the office, you know, every other day. It's just more risk for businesses these days. And I really don't blame them because most businesses, all they want to do is just create a valuable product and deliver it to customers and then profit from that. At the end of the day, that's all they want. They don't want to deal with all the, all of these 
headaches, all of the politics. They don't want to deal with that. Right. And that's why I can't understand these companies that virtue signal these big corporations that hire these women based on a quota or try to form this multicultural staff, you know, based on a quota. And they're ignoring like the best candidates for the job instead, just, you know, hiring candidates based on skin color, gender or sexual preference. You're not doing the customers any favor. And just the same, you're being unfair to your shareholders because a lot of these corporations, obviously, they have stock. You know, everyday people like you and me buying, buying shares of their company and they are not delivering the highest value product that they can to the customer. They are not focused on creating revenue, creating value. Instead, their focus is on creating like this multicultural staff full of gays, trans, lesbians, women, so we could virtue signal Right? They're not in it for business, they're in it for politics. At the end of the day, it's hard to blame a lot of these business owners for not hiring women in today's environment. Okay, Beyond everything we talked about, there's just too much risk. There's just too much risk. And I'm not advocating either way, I'm just stating it as it is. So I'm gonna wrap up here. Until next time, this is Matt Cross from Alpha Male Secrets. Don't forget to smash that like button below. Also, hit that notification bell right next to it so that you are notified whenever I release a brand new coaching video to YouTube. More importantly, guys, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Too many of you guys are still unsubscribed to my channel. Okay, that means you're not getting my coaching videos fresh as I upload them. Instead, you're getting them weeks later, even months later. So you wanna make sure you subscribe to my channel as well. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. I really appreciate it if you subscribe. It really helps me out a ton, guys, so please make sure you subscribe to my channel. And for you guys who want to support my work and all of this red pill knowledge I'm teaching guys here even further, the best way to do that is by becoming a premium subscriber of my premium Alpha Male Secrets channel which I am hosting on a private platform away from YouTube. Now, why am I doing that? The reason why I'm doing that is because I am trying to protect my premium content. Okay, I'm trying to protect it from being demonetized, from being shut down. So I'm hosting my premium Alpha Male Secrets channel on a private platform away from YouTube. And if you wanna join, it's only one buck for the entire first month of coaching lessons. And these are lessons that you were never taught in schools, okay? By parents, teachers, society. They all fail to teach us these lessons. But you are going to be learning them on my premium Alpha Male Secrets channel. We are going to be talking about fitness, money, investing, real estate. We're gonna be talking about how to become the best version of yourself, how to become a strong, real alpha male in today's highly feminized, highly emasculated, anti-male world, okay? Because we're living in different times, obviously. A lot of these feminists have indoctrinated half the planet into thinking that men are toxic, right? Toxic masculinity. And it takes some training, right? It takes some training, it takes some knowledge in order to be able to go out there and just be a strong man, a strong alpha male, okay? Where you are not afraid to be who you are, where you no longer have to filter yourself for the politically correct out there. And you can just stand strong in your beliefs and in your values, okay? And these are all lessons that I teach you on my premium alpha male secrets channel. Okay, and the first month is only a buck. Okay, it's only $1 for the entire first month of premium content. And it's real easy to sign up. All you need to do is click that link below in my description box. It will take you over to my website where you get get signed up right now. It just takes two seconds. So do that now and I will see you in my next coaching video. All right, at the house today, guys. Ooh, there goes a Firebird. There goes the TA, the Trans Am. And have a great day.